Okay, welcome to today's video. So we're actually going to be installing this head unit. So we've gone for a Pioneer uh, DA130 DAB. So it gives us Apple CarPlay, um, Bluetooth, um, calling DAB, Spotify, etc. in the car, all touch screen. So a big upgrade on the CD player that's currently in the Subaru BRZ. So we've got a couple of extra parts to help fit it. So we've got an aerial connector. So this will help us connect the stock aerial to the new head unit. We've got some trim pieces that go on the side of the head unit because the Subaru BRZ, Sign FRS and GT86 all have a weird sized head unit for the cutout. So a stock uh, head unit fits perfectly, but a double DIN aftermarket unit like this, you need some filler panels, so I'll show you those. We've got this uh, adapter here, and what this does is it allows us to retain the standard USB socket on the dashboard. So we show you how to connect that. And then we've got our ISO block here as well. Um, and all this does is allows us to connect and utilize the stock speakers, um, power, etc., that are fed from this. So you notice here as well, we're not showing this in today's video, but we might do a separate video. That's just a reversing camera as well that came with this head unit. So we're gonna try and install that at some point. So you'll, we'll show you how we connect that as well, but it won't be covered in this video. So let's go inside the car now. We'll talk about how to remove the stock head unit and then how to install this one. Okay, so now we're in the car. First of all, let's get the stereo surround off. So we get our trim tool and get that out away so it's just clips on the back of those so just one two three four five six so that gets that out then we've got a couple of bolts here so we'll get a socket and get those undone okay so if we bring the camera in close you can see we've got a 10 mil socket here and a 10 mil socket here so that's what we're going to be removing first to get the stock head unit out Remember to retain all the bolts that you're removing. So we may need them for fitting the new head unit after. So one. Two. Okay, so that's those out. So there's two more at the bottom as well. If we bring the camera in again, so there's one down there on this side there's one down there so we'll get those removed next and i'm quite excited to get this new stereo in because this is a really basic unit from subaru that you get with the car so it would be really good to have dab radio as well as being able to stream all my music have apple carplay and everything else in here it's going to feel like a much more modern interior once we get that stereo upgraded. There you go, that's another one out. So one more bolt to go, they're just there. So again, all 10mm bolts, so four 10mm bolts holding the head unit in. And by the looks of it, this is going to be a pretty easy swap different cars have different levels of interior trim that you have to remove to get the stock stereo out this was really simple with that one piece coming out four bolts and i think within literally a couple of minutes now i've got the stock head unit out which is great news so that was really really easy so if we bring you to the back can see we've got a number of connectors here one two three four five what we'll want to do is disconnect all of those and then marry them up with the connectors that I showed you earlier that we had on the table to swap those over and make sure we get the ones that fit okay I'm removing them couldn't be any easier they literally should be squeeze the clip and out it pops squeeze the clip out it pops Squeeze the clip, out it pops. Squeeze the clip, out it pops. And this one looks like it could be a little bit trickier. 
but again, squeeze the clip. And that's your head unit out the car. Couldn't be any simpler. I think that's definitely the easiest car I've ever done. We've got all our cables now. What we'll do is we'll go and get everything off the table, connect them up in here so we know what goes where and see if we've got anything missing. Okay, so now your stereo's out the car. You can see we've got a number of connectors. So there's one, two, three, four, and there's five because there's this one in here as well, this dark gray one. So I'll talk you through what each of those are. So this one's your aerial connector. And what we do, we have this cable on the table and it'll be linked in the description below. That connects to that one. So that should be really simple and easy to do. A bit tricky one-handed. I'm holding the camera, but there you go. That's on. That will go into the back of your new stereo. And the aerials on these cars are actually powered, so we need to connect this power cable. So we'll talk you through how to use that as well and how to connect that in a moment. Let's look at the other ones. So we've got these three connectors here. This one isn't used, so we can ignore that one. Then we can take our ISO connectors and it's as simple as matching up and there's only one way that they can fit on because of the clips. So that's one. That's two. So that's those connected and these go into the back of your aftermarket head unit. So again, all these cables I'm using are linked down below. Now the one that's caused a bit of frustration today is I was actually sent out the wrong cable. And I've just got to give the company a ring to get that. So I'll put the details down below of the correct cable that you need to use. But there's this, basically this dark gray, so let's zoom in, connector here. And this is basically runs to the back of this USB port down here. So in your car, if you want to keep and retain that, and it would be nice to, then you need to buy a cable for that. Now it'll look something like this. However, um, this cable that I've been provided actually doesn't fit over the top of that. So I'll buy a new one and get that in. And all you do then is this USB cable on the back, you plug into your new head unit. And that will mean that you'll retain this, connect, this USB port down here. So next we'll tackle this blue cable and tell you how to connect that so you can power your aerial. Okay, so we were just talking about the aerial adapter and the fact we needed to get power to it. So as far as I'm aware, if you take a look at the loom, we've got the system remote control. I'm assuming that should be able to provide power or enough power to power the aerial. So we'd need to just connect that to that. So it's very easy to do. Now there's a number of different types of connectors on the market that you can buy. So you've got this, which is one of the sort of the, the heat wrap ones. So you put the two wires in either end and then heat it up with a heat gun. Got like a simple block connector, not the, the best type of connector, but again, will do the job. Then you've also got these type of connectors, which is a crimp connector. So you basically feed both ends of the wire in and then crimp it together. So just for today, just because I'm still working out things and how I want it set up, I'm going to use one of these just to join the two cables together now on a temporary basis, just to make sure it works and for the state of the video. So all we need to do is on the loom for the aftermarket stereo. We'll show you that on the screen in a second. Okay, so there's the remote cable. So let's twist that end. And we need to just undo that screw on the opposite side. And poke that in and join that. So like I say, that isn't the best way to do it. I'm not an auto electrician, so if you don't know what you're doing, seek advice from a professional but that just gives you a temporary connection for now. So that is very much temporary for the demonstration of the video. You'd be better off using the, uh, the heat shrink connectors that you can buy as well. And I'll put a link to those in the description. So then this will then connect to 
this part so you can see here we've got all the pins are used so they go on this left hand side then we've got five of the pins are used and there's five pins in there that connects in there that's nice and easy to join those together Just while we're talking through the aftermarket head unit, so you do have some additional wires, so I'll show you those on the camera now. So this purple one is a reverse gear input. So within the uh, back of the stereo here, there will be a cable that will tell the stock head unit when it's in reverse, and that's for if your head unit uses a reverse camera, then it will take a signal from there and it will flip it into the camera mode when it hits reverse. You've got a mute cable, which again, we're not going to use for our installation today. Final one, we do have what is the parking brake cable. So that's this green one. Now that's, what's that used for? So that basically tells the car when the handbrake is applied, which means you're not move, moving and allows you to watch DVDs, videos, etc. If you've got passengers that want to do it and you want to override that feature, you can literally attach this cable and it's not not recommended but i'm telling you that you can do it if you decide you want to do it is that you can connect this to a ground cable a grounded bolt anywhere on in the car and that will actually uh, allow passengers not a driver because it'd be very dangerous for a driver to watch videos on the move but a passenger to be able to watch videos from the passenger seat you could utilize that okay so we were referring to this green ground wire so you can see what I've done is actually this new harness has all the wires labeled up car light ground etc and what I'd normally do is find a bolt in the car somewhere that's grounded to the metal and just bolt this green cable to that you can do that um, but I'm going to attempt to do it off this ground wire here so I've just used the clip that's come with it so the connector and just gone straight into that and what that will allow to do is passengers to do it so legally you might not be allowed for drivers so contemplate doing this before you actually do it whether you're happy with that taking that risk or not um, but for drivers you shouldn't be watching anything on the move it's purely down for if passengers want to watch something then they can do by grounding it out like that okay and for those that want to retain their their usb port so this one down here this is the cable that you need to extend so i've got part on order that i'll link below i haven't got it ready for this video but all you do is put it on the connector on the end of there and then you'll get a usb cable that then goes into the usb input up here on your aftermarket head unit so you're able to retain that functionality using that usb port down here so that's a super easy install so that should be all your wiring done now so you've got your aerial connector ready you've got your ISOs ready so we'll leave the reverse camera for another video so please come back and take a look at that when I install that one if that's what you're interested in doing as well but for now we want to get the head unit in and get it working so we can show you that okay so what we need to do we've got our aftermarket stereo here we've got our stock one here you can see it's got the brackets we need to retain those and use those to fit the aftermarket stereo so let's get those off and what we'll do we'll fit those straight to the new head unit the one thing I've noticed we're gonna have to be careful of is this new head unit actually has a surround on it so I need to work out how we retain that for the looks of it so let's take those off and make sure you retain the screws because you're going to need those for fitting these brackets to the new head unit okay so that's those off take that off okay so for the next part of the video i just wanted to show you these brackets so these are what came off the stock head unit now you can buy aftermarket replacements because there's the stock brackets don't quite fit the aftermarket stereo you can cut them and adjust them which is what I'm going to show you how to do or I'll leave a link down below to show you the aftermarket ones that you can buy and it's simply a case of time 
I didn't realise I needed to order these, so I've, I've modified the standard brackets just so they can work. So, the one on the left, so this one is the one I've already adjusted. The one on the right is, the, is how it comes out. So if you look, on this top edge here, there is a little right angle piece. Now that doesn't allow us to bring the bracket down low enough on the head unit because that flips over the top. So what I've done on this one to modify it is just completely cut that off. Now all I've done is used a grinder and there's plenty of tools that you could use on the metal just to cut that off. So you can see that's removed. So that's the first adjustment you need to do. Then the second adjustment you can see here, I've just marked with blue pen. It might need to come a little higher, but you just need to elongate these holes to make them higher towards the top so where this uh, angle was that you cut off so you can see here I've already started to do it with a drill bit on this one so that we're able to slide this further down the head unit because what you'll find is if you take your stock head unit and um, sorry your aftermarket head unit bolt this on with that flap over the top this stereo is actually going to hit uh, the plastics above and below and not allow you to get into the bolt holes for these what you actually need to do is sort of mount it further down sort of like there hence why I say you need to remove this flap to be able to get to it so you can see now because we've cut that flap off we can bring that lower down the aftermarket head unit so what I'm going to do now off camera is just go and cut the other bracket and then I'll show you how to install these on the aftermarket head unit and test fit it in the car to make sure it all works and fits. Okay, so I've just been and used the uh, the cutting disc and just match those up now so you can see no right angles on the back of those so they'll be able to mount lower. We've extended the holes just with a drill. Try and drill through where you can and then angle the drill or if you've got a Dremel tool. So I'm currently missing a couple of Dremel tools so I need to buy some new ones but you would be able to make those holes that little bit taller so you would be able to slide it up or down to get it to fit into the car. So what do we do next? So we need to get hold of a screwdriver. Let's have a look. So this is the bottom edge of our head unit. Just move that camera up a bit. So that's the bottom edge of the head unit. That's the top edge. So what we need to do is get hold of the right bracket so this one and it will mount in these holes but it needs to go lower so one thing I've just noticed is there's these little knobs on the back and they actually are locators which are really useful except in this position where we need to drop this lower so what we're going to do is actually just take that off the back as well okay so now we're going to fit the brackets to the head unit so we pick the left hand side so that the, f the furthest forward part is at the top and the back part is at the bottom and what we're going to do is fit that to this head unit it's going to be a bit of a trial and error process and um, just to see whether it fits so we might have to adjust this a little bit more so let's get that bolted on we'll hold it as low as we can against that head unit Get the two screws in. Like I say, we're just going to have to bolt it up, test fit it, see if we need to elongate those holes anymore, etc. Just to see how it fits and bolts into the car. Right, so that's that screw in. That's the first bracket done. So let's flip it over. Now we need to do the right hand side. So again, make sure that cut edge is at the top of the head unit. Your elongated holes line up. Okay, so let's get that screw in. Remember, you want to pull the bracket down as much as you can with your new holes. So you can see we've already dropped it quite a significant distance over the existing ones. And again, trial and error. See if this fits into the car as is. If not, we'll whip it back off. Make these holes a little bit longer. Right, so we're going to try it in the car now and see how we get on.
Okay, so we trial fitted that in the car, just slotted it into place, so to see whether these um, holes lined up with the holes where the bolts go through. And actually it's still just that, literally a couple of mil too high. So all you need to do, drop these screws out, just elongate that hole upwards, just a couple more mil. So let's get that bracket off and I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so we've got this bracket here and we just need to go upwards, just a couple more mil to maybe to the edge of where that's marked, just below the two. There's a tiny, if you can see there, a little two on it, just below that. And that should give us that enough clearance to be able to get the head unit back in place. So I'll do that on both sides and come back to you. Okay, so we're now looking at the left hand side again of the head unit. You can see we've made those holes just a little bit longer so we can get it lower. So again, just do your bolts up and we'll trial fit that on the car again. That's one bolt. Two bolts and you can see how much lower now that sits across the top of the head unit compared to when we first started and it overlapped over the top before we did any cutting or elongating of the hole so just get that in place flip over to the other side and we'll do the same on this side as well and the good thing with the uh, with this bolt hole is there's a locating plastic pin on the inside of the car so you can sort of use that and the bolt holes to line it up and you'll know whether it's in place because the head unit will either fit or it won't so what we'll do now we're going to take it in the car and i'll actually take it with me this time and show you uh, test fit it into the car okay so you can see we've slotted this in we haven't connected any of the connectors we just want to see what the bolt holes are like and if you can see here and here you just make sure those are lined up and then obviously down in these little bits down in here you can see there's a little locating peg there so as long as that's through and lined up and your bolt holes lined up which they are on both sides so the head unit now uh, is in so we know that fits and the brackets are done so that's really good what do we need to deal with next well we've got to deal with the connectors behind here Okay, so you can see we've got the all the wiring ready. We've just talked you through all the different bits we've done. So let's get it all connected now to your head unit to get that the right way around. So first of all, let's deal with the aerial cable. And different head units and different markets are different in terms of the locations on the back of here. But we'll get that aerial one in. We've then got this big chunk of wires and that can easily go in. Pop that in there, that's that connected. So this green one, will batch that up. So let's just tidy that up a bit by just scrolling that up. And we'll wrap a cable tie around that, just so that we've not got that big long wire just dangling about inside. So the only things left to connect or to talk about is this block here, which is quite a wide um, block. That's not used in the aftermarket stereo, so you don't need to worry about that. That will always be disconnected. And then the one we've just talked about, which is the USB retention. Once I've got that cable, I'll plug that in and plug it to my USB port on the back of my head unit. So if we whip that in, all that wiring will tuck down below where the head unit's going. You can see that's your head unit. We'll just put it on the pins. In. But what we want to do is just give that a quick test. Let's put the ignition on. And you can see there the head unit, the Pioneer head unit has now powered up. So let's check everything works. And then we can talk about microphone installation if you've got a microphone. Okay, so. We haven't got the DAB aerial connected. Let's see if our FMAM works. You can hear already that the speakers are working. 
Okay, for this next part, we're going to talk through fitting the aerial. Now, I've had to drop the audio off because I realised the radio was playing in the background and I didn't want to be copyrighted on YouTube uh, for including the music. So, apologies for the sound cutting out here. But what we're going to do is basically look at routing the uh, microphone, attaching it to the headliner using this hook here. And all it does is just hook over the edge of the uh, headlining and then we can work out where we run that cable. So, I think. The A pillar was the ultimate uh, destination for running that cable down behind the A pillar and then down behind the rubber trim on the door surround uh, and down underneath the dashboard. So you can actually go underneath the sort of the steering column area and come back up through. So when the audio comes back on, um, I'll actually talk you through exactly how to remove that A pillar and how to run this cable so you can see here just opening the door just so you can get to the edge and be able to fill it you can actually run that cable down behind here so that's really handy that gives you a place to get it down there under the dash and feed it up through to the back of your head unit so just turn that down so yeah that'll be a really easy installation so you can see there you just took the cabling down took it down here and took it all the way around so i'm not going to show you feeding that through because it's really obvious and what you might want to do is just cable tie it underneath uh, the dashboard so that's all hidden away so i'm going to do that now and just feed that through i'll do it on a bit of a time lapse video for you if you want so that's easier and we'll speed that clip up so at least you can slow it down and watch it if you want to and then we will talk about getting the bolts back into the head unit and getting the fascia plate on so that's all installed. Okay, so what we'll do, let's talk you through a little trick that we're actually gonna uh, attempt to do, which is basically, you can see light when you look through the dashboard down into here it's really tricky to be able to feed it through so normally you would use maybe a wire coat hanger or something like that and all I'm gonna do is poke this through to the light from up, the, up above take my cable that I want to pull through and this is just three long cable ties attached together and then I'll be able to pull the uh, big microphone cable through so let's poke this in The aim is, yep, that's worked. You can see there, we've got the cable tied through. So make sure you don't let this end drop out. And what you wanna do, you get your microphone cable end that's going to the back of the head unit. Tape that to the end of the cable tie. A bit of electrical tape or whatever you've got to hand. and you'll be able to actually pull that through the dashboard without having to rip all the panels off just to be able to feed this, this one cable through. So we see now, we pull through, and we've now pulled through that, through the dashboard into the back of the head unit. So we've now got our connector. But again, we connect back of the head unit to the microphone socket. And now we've got a microphone feed all the way through. There's plenty of spare cable, but we can get that tucked up and tidied up afterwards. So we wanna just make sure that's connected. So for my head unit, that's nearly done. The only thing left to install that we're actually gonna to do today is the DAB aerial. So I'm gonna get that out of the packet, take a look at the instructions to see where they recommend to do it, whether it's glass, etc., And then we'll get that installed as well. Okay, so the aerial design that we've got for the DAB aerial. So this is actually um, a slightly different design to what I've worked with before, but it'll still do the same job. So what we're gonna do is the same trick that we did to get the microphone cable up here. We'll feed this up through the dashboard. So we, again, we take this head unit out, we'll put it to the side. We can see daylight from underneath the glove box. So we'll use the same trick of our cable ties through. Again, if you've got a coat hanger or something like that, you can use that. And we'll be able to pull that through. So let's get the 
head unit out the way for a second. We're going to lean forward, look for that light in the footwell, and then pass those cable ties down. And again, they pop through under the dashboard. So let's just make sure that's hooked up. We'll unravel the cables on the aerial. And what I'm thinking is we want to get the aerial over to the pillar over there. So if we come up through this way, we can go behind the glove box, tuck all the wiring up underneath and go up through, just like we did here and went through behind the seal. So we'll do exactly the same on that side for the aerial. So I'm not gonna show you locating the aerial because it's a different aerial, it depends on how you attach it to the glass, etc. But I'll show you how you feed this cable through. So again, need our electrical tape chunk of that, get at the hold vent, the end of that are coat hangers or whatever you've used to poke through, get our cable, tape it to the end of it and you're not going past a lot so it shouldn't be too tricky and get snagged on anything, you say is that and then it will get snagged, there we go and we're through so that's a little trick you can use that especially when you're rewiring cars and you've got to get cables through to the doors for example you can use coat hangers it's a, an agile trick that lots of people use for car wiring installation and getting it through tight spots so next let's get that off right so that's that tape off and again your aftermarket head unit is going to be different, but you need to find your DAB aerial connection, which on mine is that one. Get that connected. Now you've got lots of connections on the back for whether you've got a, a reverse camera in, etc. You're not going to worry about any of that today because we're literally just doing the simple insta installation of getting the stereo to work. So, right, so we're nearly there now. So, what's left to do? So we've got our microphone connected, so that's good news. Uh, we've got all our speakers working, our radio working. So now, let's do a test fit on this. So just slap that in place. Now you can see we've got gaps down the side. Oh, the microphone's twisted. So you've got gaps down the side of the head unit there. Now you need some sort of filler panel. Now I've got a couple of pieces of trim that actually bolt onto the side of the head unit, here and here. Let's remove that out of the way. So they bolt here and here, and they fill that gap. You can buy one that clips in around the edge, but here that's quite common to fall out. So what we'll do, we'll go and get those filler pieces now. We'll see whether we need to remove the head unit from the car or not, and then we'll go from there. Um, okay, so if we take a look at the brackets, they should fit on here like this and fill the gap either side of the uh, the new aftermarket head unit because the stock one's wider. If you look, when we flip this on its side, let's bring the camera up so you can see, it doesn't actually fit. So if, with this one, it doesn't actually fit around this because we're using the stock brackets. Maybe with the aftermarket ones they do, but they don't with the stock brackets. So we're just going to modify th these as well so that they fit. So you can see here, what I've done is actually just widened it so we can actually move it forward and line it up with the front of the head unit. So that's all there. And all our holes now line up with the screw holes. So if we put that down, I'll show you exactly what I've done. So I'll give you a bit of a comparison of the two. You can see, so let's hold that. I've brought this hole, this down lower, so it's closer to here. And then I've also widened it at the back here as well. So it allows us to get it right forward and down at the right angle. So again, you may not need to do this if you have the right metal brackets, so the aftermarket ones, but we're, do, we're making do with what we have. So this may not be a step that you need to do, but I'll include it in here for anyone that's doing the same job as me. So what we'll do, we'll drop these bolts out now. And all we're going to do is mount this 
over the top of and hopefully these screws should be long enough yet yeah, that they grip through and hold this plastic trim in place yep so that's worked so just like we were doing earlier let's flip the head unit up and then we need to bolt that to the side of it through so I'm going to do that off camera now we now have this back. bolted to the side of the head unit so you can see that piece of trim now slots in there and cub fills the gap so what we're going to do is flip the head unit over modify this bracket and then bolt that to that as well so I'll go and do that now okay so apologies the sound dropped off on this but what I'm just showing you is the fact I've used four bolts in each side of these plastic brackets just to make sure they're held completely in place and there's no movement flexibility because it's it is only plastic so you just want to make sure and I've done that on the other side as well you can see there I've now added the two bolts at the front so there's not much movement in them and they fit nicely and will fill that gap in the uh, head unit on the car so now get the surround and test fit that just make sure it all fits with your head unit it's a little bit tricky but there you go slide that over and you can see that now fills the gaps nicely around the head unit so what we'll be able to do is actually put that on the car um, and ensure that all fits correctly and there's no issues with fitment at all okay so we've got obviously those new plastic brackets now on the head unit so remember making sure they tuck right in and they go on the outside i've seen many people try and put them under the metal bracket and then had to do a lot more adjustment to them that's not the case they actually go on the outside of that metal bracket for that one so make sure your pins line up on your head unit push that back into place and then what i'm going to do you notice i haven't done any of the wiring or anything like that so all i want to do is just get this pretty much back in place exactly where it's going right so it might need Right, so it's a little bit tight. It was easier doing it off the car than on the car, but we're gonna get it. Let's just have a little play with the fitment, the stereo. You might have to drop it down just because we've not got it bolted in place at the moment. But all I'm trying to do is te test fit the plastic surrounding the car and make sure everything bolts back in place. So those are those two filler pieces so let's show you what it's going to look like ignore the dust on the screen for now but you can see here it fills that gap nicely you've got a little air gap up there but general day to day you're not going to notice it and i think what i might do is when i have uh, this painted or wrapped in the future is do something here to maybe fill that in but for 99 percent of people that's going to be a perfect solution for you to be able to get Apple CarPlay, etc. So that's pretty much the installation done. You've already seen me do the wiring once. I'm going to put it on a, a time lapse video and just show you me pulling this back out, getting the wiring all reconnected, and then away we go.
Okay, so that's all the wiring reconnected to the head unit. So what we're gonna do, took that all down so none of it gets trapped. Remember if you've got a UK BRZ, you've still got this flashing light. You don't wanna trap behind any of these connections, so make sure you just ensure that that's all tucked over. Right, because you've introduced a lot of cables, your cable management just needs to be a bit on point to make sure it's all tidy and nothing's getting trapped. Make sure that light for the BRZ security lamp comes through. There you go. So that's in. So what do we need now? Our 10mm socket. So let's grab hold of that. And if you remember, we put our four bolts down here. And all you've got to do is put those back in place, which is our extension piece, so we're nowhere near our new face unit. Do them up by hand first, so you don't cr risk cross-threading anything. That's one. Get the two lower ones. And I have to say that was a relatively easy install. It would have been even easier if I'd brought the uh, the metal brackets or the aftermarket ones. You live and learn. But it was easy enough to adjust the stock metal ones to make it fit and work with these aftermarket plastic pieces. Now, I've heard lots of dremeling needed around these edges. That's not been the case with this. I think it's purely down to the fact that uh, we've put it in the right order, that it's fitted a lot better than what I think some people have had in the past. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll link down to those below so that you've got a link to where you can purchase these same plastic trim pieces from, because they seem to be pretty good. Is it the most perfect solution? <laughs> I've seen tidier installs in cars, but if you're the sort of person that that's going to bother then there's lots of options you can do in terms of uh, fiberglassing these plastic pieces into that front cover etc so it's a bit of a tidier solution but this will get you through for 90% of the people and you'll be happy with the way this is installed so obviously one thing I would recommend is testing that your head unit works before you bolt it in so I should have done that first but it's all connected now anyway, so I'm gonna make sure that Subaru alarm light goes in. That's now poking through the dashboard. And then all you do, it just needs a bit of maneuvering just because you've got to maneuver around these new bits of plastic trim that you've put in. So just do a bit of maneuvering to get it over the top. There you go. And that's it and done. So there's not much movement in these. They seem to pr fit pretty well. So I'm quite happy with that and the way that is. So yes, it's a powered antenna. And there you can see now that head unit's working. So if we go to the FMAM, that's now working. So what we'll do, we'll get our USB cable and we'll do our Apple CarPlay next and just show you that working in the car as well. Okay, so you can see the head unit's now in, all working and fully installed. So let's just talk through the Apple CarPlay feature. So we've got our lightning cable connected to the USB port. We that, connect that to our phone. I'm not going to show the music working just because we will uh, get pulled for copyright. But you'll see now the Apple CarPlay logo come up in a second from my iPhone. There you go. And now you've got access to all your Apple apps that have CarPlay functionality. So whether it's your messages, phone calls, You've got your sat nav as well. You can obviously do your Bluetooth telephone calls. Hit this below and you've got access touchscreen to any of your different options in terms of the, uh, the apps on your phone. So it's really handy. You can control your Apple Music through it. So you can see there, it'll bring up the album art, the song, etc. So we make sure those songs won't play just because we don't want to be copyrighted. So if you found this video useful in terms of the install, please hit the like button below. That really helps. Share it with anyone that's asking for advice on fitting head units in these cars. That would be great again for the community. Please hit that uh, subscription button below and hit the bell for notifications on future videos.
plenty of content coming soon. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bit, and there's actually little holes on the top.